thunder of jets in an open sky, a streak of gray, and a cheerful... A loop, a whirl, and a vertical climb, and once again, you'll know it's time for the adventures of... Rocky and Bullwinkle, and friends. Starring that supersonic speedster, Rocket J. Squirrel, with his pal, Bullwinkle the Moose, and a host of others. I'm coming as fast as I can. Wave to the people. Yay! Now what are you doing? Sign an autograph. The Steve John Smith. But your name is Bowwinkle. I know, but that's hard to spell. Most Americans, the folks in Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, rely heavily on their television sets. Not just for eating off of, but for the evening news. 80,000 men a year. And now here's tonight's cutie. Crate and Finney of Butte Falls fell into an open manhole, was swept down the Colorado River, and came out 30 days later in the Pacific Ocean. Weather report for tomorrow. Clear, cloudy skies with gusty showers and sunny late mornings following the snowstorm. And now this is... That weather report was about as accurate as one dared to get. For in Frostbite Falls, you never knew what it was going to be next. Phil, don't forget your ghoul lashes. I'm going to bed, Aggie. Day in, day out, the citizens were at the mercy of a very unpredictable climate. They were, that is, until the Committee for Civic Improvement got to work. Well, boys, how's she look? Long as she forecasts the weather, who cares how she looks? For the sum of $33.15, they had purchased a fortune-telling machine from an abandoned penny arcade. You simply put a coin in the slot, the lady in the window dealt cards, and the hand she laid down determined the weather. Four tens. That means light snow. And it did snow lightly for about three weeks. Four kings. Rising temperatures. Sure enough, it got to be 121. Months went by, and tourists from all over the world ogled the odd weather machine. One or two even attempted to buy it without success. It remained for those two flies in the ointment, Boris and Natasha, to spoil what could have been an uninteresting but easy-to-narrate story. Oh, you men are all alike, Boris. You got brunette with you. You look at blonde. I not look at blonde, Natasha. I look at cards. It seems the machine was so well-oiled... Lucky machine. It was operating better than ever. The hands manipulated the cards at blinding speed with a dexterity seldom seen outside of Las Vegas. Who cares about the speed, body boy? I like what cards she holds. Oh, the cunning brain of that man. For sure enough, she never put down a hand without showing at least four of a kind. Yeah, but can she play pinochle? Don't be jealous. She could be the answer to our problems. We don't got no problems. Well, we better get some then or we won't be in the next episode. The clock in the tower at the far end of town struck midnight. Boris struck two under cover of a dense fog. Four queens. He and Natasha escorted the weather lady right out of town. The following morning... Let's go, Rock. Get your glove and let's get down to the field. The team is counting on us, you know. Wait a second. Suppose it rains. Mercy me. We better check. And they dashed post-haste to the site where the weather machine had been located. Oh, darn it. That's the fifth nickel I put in and she still won't work. Bullwinkle, you don't seem to realize the weather lady is gone. Maybe if I tried a dime. Hmm. Sure is a mystery. Maybe she works on slugs. It was then that Rocky noticed the heavy-duty tire tracks leading away from the scene of the crime. They loaded her here, turned around there, and drove off there. Come on! Hours later, after miles of painstaking plotting, they reached the moving van. Shh! 
We'll sneak up from both sides. Oh, if it were only fair to warn them, for the bridge that Empty Van was resting on had definitely been tampered with. We might have a disaster here. Don't miss the Rolling Stone or Luck Ma No Moss. Well, it appeared as though the problem of predicting the weather for Frostbite Falls had been overcome. Wife's looking better these days, Mr. Mayor. That's not my wife. City Council purchased this machine from a penny arcade. What cards does she show? Four doses. Hmm. Foggy tonight. It was so foggy, no one ventured out on the streets. No one but those enterprising rascals, Boris and Natasha. A foggy night in Frostbite Falls. Oh, for pity's sake, Boris, why you get a stealing blonde who deals cards? Because, Natasha. Ooh, that's heavy. Blonde dealer never deals less than four of a kind. Interesting, but uninformative. Please to zip up your mouth. You want you should give us away? But the town slept solidly, and it wasn't until some 12 hours later that the heinous crime was discovered. They put her in a moving van and drove off in that direction. However, the tire tracks came to a halt not too far from town. In the center of a very unsteady bridge, our heroes cornered their quarry. Let's go get him, Bullwinkle. Someone had sawed away at the understructure. Collapse seemed imminent. Bullwinkle, shh. Don't shh me, Rock. Shh, the doggone bridge. Meanwhile, at the top of Sam Hill... Let me look, Boris. After all, it was my dime. All you look at, Natasha, is panoramic view. I'm looking for panoramic disaster. Ah, that eliminates moose and squirrel. Also moving van. Natasha, there comes a time when we must shoulder the load, when life's burdens become... Oh, enough! <laughs> I carry the blonde first, Maya. You carry your second. That is fair. Yes, it was, considering it was only a mile to the river, and that was Boris's ultimate goal. Let's rejoin this twosome later and go back to where the bridge crashed into the gorge. They ought to have this bridge condemned. And with that parting shot, the lads retraced their steps back to Frostbite Falls. It was just about that time that Boris, Natasha, and the weather lady reached the little river town of Wachawi Falls. Okay, Samson. Your turn to carry it. Natasha, it will give me great privilege to do so. And he toted it three steps inside a boat-building establishment owned by a man named Hiram Trump. Mr. Trump? My card. Uh, Ace of Diamonds. You a gambling man, mister? No, but with a moniker like Trump, you must be. Who's the sick lady in the sedan chair? That, my friend, is unpuzzledly the world's most fantabulistic card player what it is. She plays cards? Like a snake. Well, this river town was noted for its poker games, and in less than an hour, Trump's interior was jammed with onlookers and players alike. Well, what do you know? Four queens. I'll be... That's the tenth straight hand she's come up with, four of a kind. Well, that cleans us out, I guess. Forty-one thousand, forty-two... Mr. Trump, I don't want your money. Forty... Wow! Here, take this filthy looker back. But you won it, fair and square. Well, maybe square. Look, you give us a little going-away gift and you can keep money. What kind of a gift? Oh, say that steamboat sitting outside by the dock. Say, what's Boris up to besides no good? Well, perhaps we'll find out in our next installment a southern-style breakfast or how many grits can you eat? The one sure thing about the weather in Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, was that it was changeable. And tomorrow morning, it'll be either sunny, cloudy, raining, snowy, foggy, smoggy, hailing, drizzly. No one was able to make an accurate prognostication until the city council bought a fortune-telling machine. Look, Bullwinkle, four aces. What are they going to sing? Four aces means variable high cloudiness. And two snakes in the grass meant Boris and Natasha. With that machine, Natasha, we could clean up. Why not use broom, darling? Brooms don't hold four of a kind every hand. Thus, on a severely overcast night, the two near the wells transported the weather lady right out of Frostbite Falls and down to a river town. There, Boris inveigled the local Knicks into proving their so-called prowess with a game of poker. Ha! Three aces, two kings. Beat that. 
One, two, three. Oh, what a shameful crime, sir. Lucky lady has four fours. Boris cleaned the town out and used the money to purchase a somewhat antiquated steamboat. Four coats of paint later. Well, Natasha, they always said we'd go up the river. His most striking colors, Captain Badenov, but what do you call her? How about the spirit of St. Louis? He's been took. The Hesperus? Ah, they wrecked that one. Because he wanted to attract gambling customers, Boris settled on the name Sands Hotel. The weather lady was stationed in the main salon and Boris pitted her uncanny luck against all comers. Sure enough, she never failed to produce less than four of a kind. And even on a rare occasion when her opponent held four of a kind, the weather ladies were higher. I've a dog, four trays, beats my four deuces. Sunny skies this morning, drizzles this afternoon. The Sands Hotel navigated its way up and down the river, picking up a passenger here, a bale of cotton there. But mostly sharp-eyed card sharks who had heard of the lady in the booth that had yet to lose a game of poker. Say, ain't you the guy who broke the bank in Monte Carlo? That's right, Captain. Lucky Louis Ledbetter. And I expect to do the same for this boat. Well, Lucky Louis lasted five hands. This battle here, Mr. Ledbetter, is on sale today. Meanwhile, what about Rocky and Bullwinkle? Were they going to take this sitting down? Nope. We just painted the chairs. Listen to this, Bullwinkle. The Steamboat Sands Hotel challenges anybody or anything to a game of poker. Come be beaten by Ruth Booth, the best female poker player on Earth. They're talking about our missing weather lady. That night, two stowaways climbed aboard the Sands Hotel. Lucky for us, the river is low this time of year. Shh, somebody will hear you. A peek through a porthole confirmed the little squirrel's suspicions. The weather lady was indeed Miss Ruth Booth. We gotta sneak her out. Bowwinkle, you create a diversion while I jimmy the lights. Then when the lights go out, you grab the weather lady and swim to shore. We to shore. Yeah. Some two minutes later, a southern gentleman wearing a beaver hat over what looked like a hat rack sat down opposite the card machine. Good evening, yo, sir. My name is Colonel Beauregard. Boris is Moose you said you killed in previous episode. Look, it's his show. If he wants to be hard to kill, let him. You come to play Miss Booth here? Oh, oh, you bet. You're the one who does the bedding, Sonny Poopsy. Go get a gun. What kind of gun? Spray? No, a gun gun. The kind goes boom. Uh-oh, will Rocky be able to kill the lights before the moose gets killed? Be with us next time for Bartender, Turn Those Lights Off, or A Shot in the Dark. Well, in case you weren't with us last time, Rocky and Bullwinkle located the missing weather lady. There she is, Bullwinkle, and Boris must have been the thief who stole her. The plan to get her back was simple. Bullwinkle would get Boris's attention, Rocky would then short the light circuit. In the darkness, Bullwinkle would grab the weather lady and take her ashore. It was as simple as that. Alas, so was Bullwinkle. So your name is Colonel Beauregard, yeah? That's right, sir. Of the Bull Weevil Beauregards. Boris, that is Moose. No. Yes. I thought maybe it was Miles Standish. Maybe you're right. Natasha, go get gone in one bullet. Don't get two bullets. For why? I might use second bullet and you know who. <laughs> Sorry for all the chit chat, Colonel. Now, how would you like to make a bet? You bet. No, we did that one last time, didn't we? Here you are. What's that, piggy bank? Pig in a poke, you all know. Okay, here is five cards. What you got? Five cards, just like you said. See, how'd you do that? Do what? Deal me five cards and know how many I had. Good thing I brought my mother seals along. Please, Moose, uh, Mr. Beauregard, what cards you hold? A king high. Straight? No, just a king high. And there's four of them. Too bad. I didn't win. No, I got a potsy. A potsy? Two threes and the joker. That beats four kings? On this boat it does. Yeah. By this time, Rocky had found the master light switch, and Natasha had found an elephant gun. Both went into action at the same instant. <laughs> well, you think Otto Priminger made an exodus, huh? In less than ten seconds, the good ship Sands Hotel was devoid of any activity, except, of course, for the captain and the first mate. Darling, what happened? Natasha, you came this close to hitting Moose. This close? I must have hit someone else then. I'm going to be a sport and give you three guesses. Oh, no, Boris, not. It wasn't. He couldn't. Oh, go get needle and thread. While Boris is getting to the seat of his troubles, we'll peek in on Rocky, who is waiting anxiously on shore. Sure wish Bullwinkle would get here, and I hope he has... Hiya, Rocky! Gosh, am I glad to see you. Did you get the weather lady? 
She's right here, tucked under my... Was then they noticed an alteration in the lady in the booth. She's gone robot on us. Bo Winkle, you grabbed a phone booth. Taking advantage of the situation, Rocky telephoned Boris. Listen, Foxy Squirrel, I wouldn't sell New Dealer for all the tea in bags. Hmm? How much? Fifty dollars tax-free. Hold still. His deal. Send Moose over with money. That's fifty smackaroonies I didn't expect to get. You really sell blonde in booth for fifty bucks. Does money grow on radishes? Suspecting that Boris might pull a fast one, Rocky insisted that the transaction take place in the center of town in front of a few hundred southern gentlemen. Okay, the money's in this sack. And where the lady is in envelope. You stuffed her into that tiny envelope. Kind of hard to believe. Hey! coming off here. Key is in here. Key to safety deposit box in depot. Safety deposit box has weather lady. Well, I don't know. That seems like a pretty... Oh, hold still, Boris. There is a mosquito on your cheek. And the moose made a deft swipe. <laughs> Missed. But the men standing on the sides didn't. Slapped his face. And that gentleman means a duel. Well, this was an unforeseen development. Don't miss our next installment, unhappily entitled Dual Controls, or put it in second. To sum it all up, this fortune-telling machine predicted the weather for Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. Four lines means it's going to be cloudy. Cloudy in more ways than one for the jerk of all trades, Boris Badanov. And faithful Indian companion, Natasha. Kidnapped the card machine and set it up in the main salon of Boris's showboat, recently rechristened the Sands Hotel. He's worth a gamble, I always say. Rocky and Bullwinkle tried their darndest to get the weather lady back, and eventually it came down to an out-and-out -out trade. Fifty dollars for the weather lady. It's a deal. And no funny stuff. That's the way it's been so far. Rocky insisted the transaction be held in front of witnesses. Thus, in the middle of Main Street... Here's the money, now where's the... Look out, there's a skeeter in our midst. Actually, it was on Boris's cheek. Well, when the gentleman lining the streets of this southern community viewed that... Struck him in the face, sir. This calls for a settlement on the field of honor. Or in layman's language, a duel. The following morning at dawn, in a quiet field, the opposing parties met. But I thought a duel meant goodbye in French. Quiet, Bowwinkle, and let me think of a way out of this mess. Mr. Badenov, as your second, let me wish you the best of luck. That's very big of you, I'm sure. You're not frightened, are you? Who, me? Listen, Georgie Porgy, my favorite composer is no coward. Yes, neither Bullwinkle nor Boris wanted any part of this affair. But when in Rome... You'll take uh, ten paces, turn, and fire at will. And you can see the kind of a show this is when we don't pun an obvious setup like that. One, two, three, four... Five, six... Well, it was such a beautiful day that everyone forgot about the jewel. Rocky, the second, and the judge had a picnic. Forty-two, forty-three, forty-four... As for Bullwinkle and Boris, they just kept walking. The whole thing blew over, and once more, our heroes attempted to purchase the weather lady. Oh, boy, are my legs stiff. Here's your fifty dollars. And here is envelope containing key which unlocks safety deposit box containing weather lady. Alas, it contained a key that unlocked the safety deposit box, all right, but the weather lady... He wasn't in it. Say, can't the fella run a room around here with any privacy? That does it. It sure does. Now I'm mad. And when a flying squirrel gets mad... Three dollars and eighty cents between us. That's not enough. But, Winkle, we gotta raise more money. They dug ditches, performed on street corners, scrubbed floors, sold magazine subscriptions. Now how much do we have? Three dollars and eighty-five cents. Yes, the wage scale then was unfortunately low, as were the lad's spirit. And that's when the circus hit town. Wanted high platform diver. That's me, Bullwinkle. The plucky squirrel gave three performances a day. <whistles> Remember when we used to do this in the title rock? And so, when the Diggling Brothers Circus left town, Rocky and Bullwinkle had earned well over a thousand dollars. Well, we did it, Rock. But what did we do it for? You'll see. Come on. The Sands Hotel was jammed with customers, all taking the customary shellacking from the weather lady, when the squirrel plopped the money on the table. One thousand one hundred dollars and fifteen cents that Miss Booth there can be beaten. Well, it's obvious Rocky has a plan in mind. What that plan is will be revealed in our next exciting episode, They Didn't Pick Up Our Option, or Showdown.
Well, we're running into the home stretch, and still Rocky and Bullwinkle have not regained possession of the fortune-telling machine. We've been cheated, bamboozled, and hornswoggled. Sounds like a law firm. Fortunately, a circus came to town, and this gave the little squirrel an idea. With the money we could earn working for the circus, we could get the weather lady back. And there are those today who still rave about the Dingaling Brothers' high diving act. Ta-da! Lord, that's effective. Sure is. Mighty talented squirrel. Squirrel, I was looking at that platform. Well, by the time the circus left town, our heroes were financially solvent. One thousand dollars and change. And now we'll try and buy the weather lady back again, correct? Incorrect. That evening, Rocky entered the gambling salon of Betanov's gambling showboat and issued a challenge. I'll bet a thousand dollars she can be beaten. Well, well, it's little bad Benny who always turns up. So you want to make a bet, huh? Okie dokie, here is card. Just a minute. If I win, I don't want to be paid off in cash. What color stamps you like? If I win, you got to give the weather lady back to Frostbite Fall. You must be kidding. Boris, what you got to lose? Blonde always win. Squirrel is bet. Here is cards. Wait a minute. My challenger hasn't arrived yet. Challenger? You got train coming in here? No, it wasn't a train, but it was operating under a full head of steam. Yes, into the room came Bullwinkle, pulling, of all things, another fortune-telling machine. The great predictor tells all. Hey, uh, what is this? According to this newspaper clipping, you challenged anybody or anything to play Miss Ruth Booth here. Boris would have protested had it not been for the customers who insisted he follow through. This must be final episode. Squirtle always gets best of me in end. Okay, start your machine first. There wasn't a relaxed nerve in the house as the man in the booth shuffled and extracted not one, but four kings. We need four aces, darling. Four unmitigated aces. We need our own show. That's what we need. Okay, here goes something. The weather lady performed like a champion. She shuffled, cut, and then proceeded to extract four aces from the deck. One, two, and then it happened. She began shuffling and cutting like a demon. Cards flew everywhere. It happened, just like I figured. Who built this thing, Colin Clive? Don't you see? The other machine was too much for her. She fell in love. No, I see the light. He didn't for long. Boris and Natasha each grabbed a machine and in the darkness managed to lower a lifeboat into the water. Row, Natasha, row. With these two, we can breed whole new race of dealers. Boris, sign on boat, say capacity 500 pounds. So what? You, me, and two lovey doves here don't weigh that? No, but bag full of ill-gotten gains does. And so as the setting lifeboat sinks into the sea, we bid a fond but reluctant farewell to this part of our story and pick it up in Frostbite Falls some two months later. Sure missed the weather lady. She was downright attractive. This one's just as accurate, though. Hmm. Paradeuses. Paradeuses? That means variable high fogginess gradually clearing by two in the morning, providing it don't rain. Bullwinkle, how's it going? Not bad, Rock. Card's a little sticky, though. I must be a little slow. You got the credits, Bullwinkle? All on this itty bitty card. Oop.